On the matter of the rate of immigration, let's just clear up something. Nobody on my side, I certainly am not against immigration, and that is not what the motion is about. And you can reinvent it however much you want, but that's not what it's about. It's that there has been too much. The political climate in the United Kingdom has always been a hotbed of intense debate and fervent discourse. Over the years, this has been particularly evident in the conversations surrounding immigration, a subject that has divided opinions and polarized public sentiment. The recent collaboration between two of the most vocal figures in British politics, Nigel Farage and Douglas Murray, has brought this issue back to the forefront as they launch a scathing critique against UK Prime Minister Keir Starmer. Well, I'm afraid that the uh, New York Times, I've written about this quite a number of times in recent years, since 2016 has just had an unbelievable animus against Great Britain. Seems not to have been able to forgive the populace for the democratic vote uh, that meant that we voted for Brexit. Both Farage and Murray have been unapologetically critical of Starmer's leadership, or as they see it, the lack thereof, accusing him of failing to address the country's immigration challenges. Their argument is not just a political rebuke, but an assertion that Starmer's perceived inaction has directly contributed to the rise of anti-immigration riots, which have left the nation in turmoil. Before we start, hit the like and subscribe buttons for more exclusive news. Nigel Farage, a figure synonymous with Brexit and the UK Independence Party, UKIP. Look, whichever way you cut this, Immigration is the number one issue in British politics. It has been for some years. Uh, the opinion polls are astonishing. 77% of the British public want cuts to the numbers coming into Britain, and over half the voters want a reduction to near zero. So people are very upset. They're very unhappy. They're seeing the impact on local schools. They're seeing the impact on GP services. They're seeing the impact on housing or the inability of young people to get on the housing ladder. So that's why it's the number one issue. Has never shied away from controversy. His brand of populism, which emphasizes British sovereignty, national identity, and a stringent stance on immigration, has resonated with a significant portion of the British electorate. Farage's criticisms of Keir Starmer are rooted in a belief that the Labour leader's approach to immigration is not only flawed, but also dangerous for the country. According to Farage, Starmer's reluctance to take a firm stand on immigration issues has created a vacuum that has allowed frustration and resentment to fester among the public, culminating in the recent riots. Douglas Murray, an author and commentator known for his incisive analysis of Western culture and politics, shares Farage's concerns. Murray has long been a critic of what he perceives as the decline of Western civilization, which he attributes to weak leadership and misguided policies on immigration and multiculturalism. Across Europe, migration is resurging as a key political battleground. It's propelling support for far-right parties and is fermenting spats between EU member states, aggravating divides between the countries migrants travel through and those they want to reach. In teaming up with Farage, Murray has found a kindred spirit in the fight against what they both see as the erosion of British values under Starmer's leadership. Murray's critique of Starmer is not just about policy, but about the broader implications of his leadership style, which he argues lacks the decisiveness and clarity needed to navigate the complex issues facing the UK today. At the heart of Farage and Murray's critique is the belief that Keir Starmer's leadership has been characterized by indecision, and a failure to connect with the concerns of ordinary Britons. For them, Starmer's approach to immigration is emblematic of a broader problem, a disconnect between the political elite and the people they are supposed to represent. Farage and Murray argue that Starmer has been too focused on appeasing the progressive factions within his party and the broader political establishment at the expense of addressing the genuine concerns of the electorate. Migration has been uh, turned to, uh, into a flagship issue for, uh, by, by uh, parties, especially on the right. And so the, just the fact that uh, migration is on the political agenda, that uh, the images of irregular arrivals are constantly uh, broadcast by televisions across Europe, is putting the uh, agenda pushed by these parties much more um, uh, at the forefront of the political discussion. This, they claim, 
has not only weakened his position as a leader, but has also emboldened far-right elements who feel that their voices are being ignored. The anti-immigration riots, which have erupted in several parts of the UK, are, in Farage and Murray's view, a direct consequence of this leadership vacuum. They argue that these riots are not just a manifestation of xenophobia or racism, as some have suggested, but rather a desperate cry for help from communities that feel abandoned by the political class. Farage and Murray contend that if Starmer had taken a more proactive stance on immigration, implementing stricter controls, addressing illegal immigration, and ensuring that the country's borders were secure, these riots could have been prevented. Numbered 30,000 people. 30,000 people by the late 1990s was six weeks of immigration. So my point to you, first of all, is that the speed and the rate matters, and it matters for a reason which I am going to come back to in a moment. Instead, they argue, Starmer's failure to act has allowed tensions to boil over, leading to the scenes of violence and unrest that have shocked the nation. In their critique, Farage and Murray are particularly scathing about what they see as Starmer's inconsistency on immigration. They point to his shifting positions on the issue, accusing him of pandering to different audiences depending on the political winds. For instance, they highlight how Starmer, during his leadership campaign, pledged to end hostile environment policies and take a more compassionate approach to immigration. What we want to do is to change our relationship with the European Union, take back control of our borders, and put in place a positive immigration policy, one that the people of Britain would overwhelmingly support, and by that I mean we want an Australian-style point system to decide who comes to live, work, and settle in this country. However, since becoming leader, they argue that he has wavered, sometimes taking a tougher stance in response to public pressure, only to backtrack when faced with opposition from within his party. This, they claim, has created confusion and uncertainty, both among the public and within the ranks of the Labour Party. Farage and Murray also criticize Starmer for what they see as his failure to articulate a clear vision for the UK's immigration policy. They argue that while he has been quick to criticize the government's handling of immigration, he has offered little in the way of concrete proposals or solutions. This, they believe, has undermined his credibility and left the country without a clear direction on one of the most important issues of the day. Farage and Murray contrast this with their own views, which advocate for a more robust and coherent immigration policy that prioritizes national security and social cohesion. That public service is a privilege and that your government should treat every single person in this country with respect. If you voted Labour yesterday, we will carry the responsibility of your trust as we rebuild our country. Another aspect of Farage and Murray's critique is their contention that Starmer has failed to address the cultural implications of immigration. Both men have long argued that immigration is not just an economic or logistical issue, but a cultural one, with far-reaching implications for national identity and social harmony. They accuse Starmer of ignoring these concerns, instead focusing on the economic benefits of immigration and downplaying the cultural tensions that can arise when large numbers of people from different backgrounds come to the UK. Farage and Murray argue that this is a dangerous oversight. In 2014, Keir Starmer was knighted for services to criminal justice. A year later, he was elected as Labour MP for a London constituency and rose quickly within the party. He served as an opposition spokesman on immigration and also Brexit. For the Labour Party, this is a very difficult bill. As it ignores the legitimate concerns of those who feel that their communities are changing too rapidly and that their way of life is under threat. The criticism leveled at Keir Starmer by Farage and Murray also extends to his handling of the broader issue of law and order. They argue that the riots are not just a symptom of frustration with immigration policy, but also of a broader breakdown in public trust in the authorities. Farage and Murray contend that Starmer, as a former director of public prosecutions, should be acutely aware of the importance of maintaining law and order. However, they accuse him of failing to provide the leadership necessary to restore public confidence in the police and the judicial system. What well, do you think it would? I mean, do you think it would be a good idea 
if you had a, a, a you know if you were running your own immigration policy which of course Britain doesn't because we're EU members do you think it'd be a good idea to get a lot of people to come who didn't speak English do you think that that, that would aid and abet integration in society well the answer of course to that clearly mm. is no do I think do you favor some immigrants let's suppose one from Mogadishu with the same skills the same ability to speak English but not mm. as a first language mm. from one from Melbourne are I you, do, have, do have a, a slight, preference. Do you have I, a preference? I have to confess, I do have a slight preference. They point to the increasing levels of crime and disorder in some parts of the country as evidence of this failure, arguing that Starmer has been too focused on appeasing activists who advocate for defunding the police and too little on ensuring that the law is enforced effectively. Farage and Murray's critique is not without its detractors. Many have accused them of stoking fear and division for political gain arguing that their rhetoric on immigration and cultural issues is inflammatory and counterproductive. The desperate plight of migrants seeking refuge in the United Kingdom has taken a harrowing turn in recent months. Come here. Critics of Farage and Murray argue that their focus on immigration is a distraction from the real issues facing the UK, such as economic inequality, health care and education. They also argue that their attacks on Starmer are part of a broader attempt to undermine the Labour Party and prevent it from posing a serious challenge to the Conservative government. Despite these criticisms, Farage and Murray's arguments have found a receptive audience among those who feel that their concerns about immigration and cultural change have been ignored by the political establishment. For many, their critique of Starmer resonates because it taps into a deep-seated sense of frustration with the way the country is being run. I have a great deal of sympathy with those who are so desperate as to uh, put their children in dinghies or even children's paddling pools and try to, try to cross the, the channel. But I have to say that what they are doing is, uh, is falling prey to, to criminal gangs and they are breaking the law. They're also undermining the, the legitimate claims of others who would seek asylum in this country. Farage and Murray's message is clear. The UK needs strong leadership to address the challenges of immigration and to restore public confidence in the nation's institutions. In their view, Keir Starmer has failed to provide that leadership and the consequences are now being felt on the streets of Britain. One of the key points that Farage and Murray stress in their critique is the idea that leadership is not just about making decisions, but about taking responsibility for the outcomes of those decisions. They argue that Starmer has been quick to criticize others, particularly the Conservative government, for their handling of immigration and other issues, but has been reluctant to take responsibility for his own role in the current situation. It suggests that there are jobs which British people not only don't want to do, but shouldn't do, don't have to do. We don't have to even encourage them to do. Please, you've had your go. We don't <laughs> even need to encourage them to do. But we will go around the rest of the world and hoover up people who are willing to work for nothing. Farage and Murray point out that as leader of the opposition, Starmer has a duty to provide an alternative vision for the country. But they argue that he has failed to do so. Instead, they accuse him of playing it safe, avoiding taking clear positions on controversial issues in order to avoid alienating potential voters. This, they argue, is not the mark of a strong leader, but of someone who is more concerned with maintaining his political position than with doing what is right for the country. Farage and Murray's critique also touches on the issue of trust. They argue that one of the reasons for the rise in anti-immigration sentiment and the recent riots is a growing distrust of the political class. The smugglers run off. They've had a good night, but one told us he now had a shortage of customers and blamed the impact of the government's Rwanda law. Near Dunkirk and it's breakfast time in a camp. Omer's cooking. Two years ago, he paid smugglers $15,000 to get him from Kurdistan to Britain. Farage and Murray contend that many people feel that politicians like Starmer are out of touch with the realities of life in modern Britain, particularly in areas that have been most affected by immigration. They argue that Starmer's failure to address these concerns has led to a breakdown in trust between the public and the political elite, which has been exploited by far-right groups to stoke fear and resentment. Farage and Murray warn that unless this trust is restored, the UK risks descending into further division and unrest. In their critique of Starmer, 
Farage and Murray also draw attention to the international dimension of the immigration debate. They argue that Starmer's approach to immigration is not just a domestic issue. 40% of the Britons have had, have said rather, that they have a favorable view of Starmer, and this is down for points in just a fortnight. At least 49% people have an unfavorable view of him and this is up by five points from the previous time. Starmer is also losing support among Labour voters. A 79% vast majority continues to back him. But has implications for the UK's standing in the world. Farage in particular has long argued that the UK's ability to control its borders is a key aspect of its sovereignty and that failure to do so weakens the country's position on the global stage. Murray, meanwhile, has highlighted the challenges posed by mass immigration in other Western countries, particularly in Europe, and has warned that the UK could face similar problems if it does not take a firmer stance. Farage and Murray argue that Starmer's failure to address these issues not only undermines the UK's national security, but also diminishes its influence in international affairs. The relationship between Farage and Murray and their joint critique of Keir Starmer. And speaking of the British Prime Minister, Keir Starmer's honeymoon in office seems to have ended. Since his dramatic election in July, Starmer's favorability ratings have dipped as much as nine points. And this is according to a YouGov poll. The Labour leader garnered high ratings during and immediately after the 2024 elections. An earlier YouGov poll from July recorded an 8% increase in number of Britons who prefer Starmer. Is indicative of a broader trend in British politics. The growing alignment between populist and conservative commentators in opposition to the political establishment. Both the populist and conservative factions in the UK have found common ground in their frustration with the current political leadership particularly under Keir Starmer. This alliance between figures like Farage and Murray reflects a deepening rift between the political class and a significant segment of the electorate who feel that their concerns are being overlooked or dismissed. Farage, with his deep roots in populist rhetoric, and Murray, with his intellectual critique of modern liberalism. For most of this country's history, there was a very homogenous group of people on these islands. And the idea, excuse me, the idea that what is happening now is what has always happened is simply a fib, and you have to look to this. The Huguenots are always given as an example, a very good example. Represent two powerful strands of opposition to the status quo. Their partnership in critiquing Starmer is a manifestation of the broader dissatisfaction that many in the UK feel towards the current direction of the country. While their criticisms of immigration are central to their arguments, the underlying issue they both highlight is a sense of betrayal by the political elite. Betrayal of the British people, their values, and their way of life. Nigel Farage has always positioned himself as a man of the people, someone who speaks the truth that others are too afraid to utter. His relentless focus on immigration has tapped into a deep well of anxiety. There's been mood for change in Britain. Now, after 14 years in the political wilderness, Labour is back, with Sir Keir Starmer about to move into 10 Downing Street. We have one job, which is to make this a summer of change. Among those who feel that the rapid changes brought about by globalisation have left them behind, Farage's argument is that Keir Starmer, like other members of the political elite, is more concerned with appearing progressive and inclusive than with addressing the real concerns of ordinary Britons. He accuses Starmer of being part of an out-of-touch establishment that is disconnected from the everyday realities of life in the UK. Farage's critique is not just about immigration numbers or border controls, it is about a perceived loss of control. For Farage and his supporters, immigration represents a threat to the very fabric of British society. They argue that the UK's ability to manage who comes into the country is fundamental to maintaining national identity and social cohesion. But whether you voted Labour or not, in fact, especially if you did not, I say to you directly, my government will serve you. Politics can be a force for good. We will show that. Farage claims that under Starmer's leadership, the Labour Party has failed to recognize this, instead promoting policies that encourage more immigration without considering the consequences for communities already struggling with the pace of change. Douglas Murray, on the other hand, 
brings a more intellectual dimension to the critique. His writings on immigration and multiculturalism have long warned of the dangers of unchecked immigration and the cultural disintegration he believes it can cause. Murray argues that Starmer's failure to address these issues is symptomatic of a broader trend among Western leaders who, in his view, are too focused on appeasing progressive sensibilities at the expense of their own cultures and societies. Murray contends that this approach is not only naive but also dangerous, as it undermines the social contract that binds nations together. Murray's critique of Starmer is deeply rooted in his belief that Western civilization is in decline. He argues that the UK, like other Western nations, is losing its sense of identity and purpose. The 2011 census, which was published last year, showed that the number of people living in England and Wales who were born overseas rose by nearly 3 million in the last decade alone. Uh, only 44.9% of London residents now tick the box saying that they are white British. And that leaders like Starmer are hastening this decline by refusing to confront the challenges posed by mass immigration. For Murray, the issue is not just about the number of people coming into the country, but about the impact this has on social cohesion, national identity, and cultural continuity. He accuses Starmer of turning a blind eye to these issues, choosing instead to focus on short-term political gains rather than the long-term health of the nation. The partnership between Farage and Murray in critiquing Starmer is also significant because it highlights the convergence of populist and conservative thought in the UK. Officials have introduced new border controls with Slovakia, but there's been a spike in migrants passing through, and where an election is also set to take place. The right-wing candidate leading the polls wants to suspend EU rules on open movement. Both men come from different political backgrounds. Farage from a populist Eurosceptic tradition and Murray from a more conservative intellectual tradition, but they share a common concern about the direction in which the country is heading. Their alliance is indicative of a broader trend in British politics, where traditional ideological boundaries are being blurred as different factions unite in opposition to what they see as a failing political establishment. This convergence is particularly evident in their shared critique of Starmer's leadership. Both Farage and Murray argue that Starmer lacks the vision and the courage to address the fundamental challenges facing the UK. The, uh, 50,000 Huguenots came to this country um, in, the, in the period uh, of the 1680s onwards. Now, 50,000 Huguenots over the period of years was equal to about two months of immigration in the 1990s. 50,000 was about two months. They accuse him of being more interested in managing his party's internal divisions than in providing the strong leadership needed to steer the country through turbulent times. For Farage and Murray, Starmer's leadership is characterized by indecision, inconsistency, and a failure to connect with the concerns of ordinary Britons. One of the key aspects of Farage and Murray's critique is their focus on the cultural implications of immigration. They argue that immigration is not just an economic issue, but a cultural one, with far-reaching consequences for the social fabric of the nation. Farage and Murray contend that the rapid pace of immigration has led to a sense of cultural dislocation among many Britons, who feel that their communities are being transformed in ways they neither understand nor approve of. Joining me now is Douglas Murray, Associate Editor of The Spectator and the best-selling author of The War on the West. Douglas, we've seen an outpouring of grief and gratitude after the Queen's death, but also it's revealed just how twisted and divorced from reality some leftist publications have become. They accuse Starmer of ignoring these concerns, instead promoting a multicultural agenda that they believe is eroding the country's traditional values and identity. Farage and Murray's critique of Starmer also extends to his handling of the Labour Party's broader policy agenda. They argue that Starmer has failed to articulate a clear vision for the country, instead offering vague promises and empty rhetoric. Farage, in particular, has been scathing in his criticism of Starmer's economic policies, which he argues are out of touch with the needs of working-class Britons. Farage contends that Starmer's focus on issues like climate change and social justice, while important, is not what most voters are concerned about. But now our country has voted decisively for change, for national renewal and a return of politics 
to public service. When the gap between the sacrifices made by people and the service they receive from politicians grows this big. Instead, he argues that Starmer should be focusing on issues like jobs, housing, and crime, which are the everyday concerns of ordinary people. Murray, meanwhile, has been critical of what he sees as Starmer's failure to stand up to the more radical elements within his own party. Murray argues that Starmer has been too willing to appease the left-wing factions of the Labour Party, particularly on issues like immigration and identity politics. This, he argues, has weakened Starmer's ability to present a coherent and credible alternative to the Conservative government. Murray contends that Starmer's failure to take a firm stance on these issues has not only damaged his own leadership, and I would say, like I think other speakers have already said, that that too much did not happen in the 50s or the 60s or the 70s or the 80s. It happened under the Labour government in the 1990s and the early 2000s. There is a motif that this country has always been a nation of immigrants. But has also left the country without a clear direction. Farage and Murray's critique is not just about policy, but also about Starmer's character and leadership style. They argue that Starmer is too cautious, too focused on maintaining his political position, rather than on doing what is right for the country. Farage and Murray contend that Starmer's leadership is characterized by a reluctance to take risks or make bold decisions, which they argue is exactly what the country needs in these challenging times. They accuse Starmer of being more concerned with managing his party's internal divisions than with providing the kind of strong, decisive leadership that the UK needs. Another key aspect of Farage and Murray's critique is their argument that Starmer has failed to address the issue of illegal immigration. They argue that the government's failure to control illegal immigration is a major source of public frustration and one of the key drivers of the recent riots. Farage and Murray contend that Starmer, rather than addressing this issue head on, has been too focused on the more politically palatable aspects of immigration. A draining away of the hope, the spirit, the belief in a better future, that we need to move forward together. Now, this wound, this lack of trust, can only be healed by actions, not words. Such as refugees and asylum seekers. They argue that this has created a sense of injustice among many Britons, who feel that their concerns about illegal immigration are being ignored. Faraj, in particular, has been vocal in his criticism of Starmer's approach to illegal immigration. He argues that the government's failure to control the country's borders is a betrayal of the British people and a fundamental failure of leadership. Faraj contends that illegal immigration is not just a law and order issue, but a national security issue, and that Starmer's failure to address it is putting the country at risk. Farage has called for much tougher measures to tackle illegal immigration, including stricter border controls and harsher penalties for those who enter the country illegally. Murray, while sharing Farage's concerns about illegal immigration, has also highlighted the cultural implications of the issue. He argues that illegal immigration is contributing to the erosion of social cohesion and the breakdown of community trust. Murray contends that the presence of large numbers of people living in the country illegally creates a sense of lawlessness. First, let me mention some of the arguments that have come up which do need answering about this. The first is the inevitable argument that the reason why we need mass immigration and have needed it is because there are jobs that British people will not do and we need to import people to do those jobs. And undermines the rule of law. He argues that Starmer's failure to address this issue is symptomatic of a broader decline in the UK's commitment to the rule of law and the principles of justice. Farage and Murray's critique also touches on the broader issue of national sovereignty. They argue that Starmer's approach to immigration is indicative of a broader erosion of the UK's sovereignty and its ability to control its own destiny. Farage, in particular, has long been a vocal advocate of British sovereignty and he argues that the UK's ability to control its borders is a key aspect of this. He contends that Starmer's failure to take a firm stance on immigration is a betrayal of the principles that underpin the UK's sovereignty and its ability to govern itself. Murray, meanwhile, 
has argued that the erosion of national sovereignty is part of a broader trend in Western politics, where leaders are increasingly willing to cede control to supranational bodies and international agreements. He contends that this trend is weakening the ability of nations to govern themselves and respond to the needs of their citizens. Murray argues that Starmer, in his failure to assert the UK's sovereignty on issues like immigration, is contributing to this trend and undermining the country's ability to protect its own interests. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, could you leave your comments below and tell us? Will Starmer's immigration stance fuel more riots? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.